Hello everybody, today I will deliver the fourth lecture of the module 2. In the earlier lecture of module 2, I have discussed the methods of formulation of dynamic problem in discrete and continuous system. Uh, in that connection, I have discussed the Newton's law and then Hamilton's principle. Newton's law is a straightforward application of the force balance that you already know and then the Hamilton principle is newly introduced uh, which is a integral formulation and from that we can arrive at the differential equation of motion. Now, today we will discuss another method that is known as Lagrange's equation and that equation is favored by many analysts because of its simplicity and also the wide applicability in case where the fourth balance is very cumbersome, especially in a complex system to determine the sign of the torque or uh, the rotational motion, sometimes the error is involved. So, to avoid this error, we prefer the Lagrange's equation, which is a straightforward formulation in form of differential quantities that is in the form of derivatives and it does not require any force balance conditions. So, here the Lagrange's equation you understand that it is a differential uh, method of finding the equation of motion. So, what we will do today in this lecture? We will first derive the Lagrange's principle how the Lagrange's equations are derived first in general. Then we will apply in several cases in discrete and continuous system okay. and we will see that Lagrange's equation is specifically used for discrete system. However, it is not restricted to only discrete system in continuous system when the separation of variable can be done that means, the space dependent coordinates is eliminated by way of separation of variable techniques, then we can apply the Lagrange's equation. So, it implies that Lagrange's equation is applicable only for the time domain formulation and in that case the differential equations will be a ordinary differential equations. Okay. So, let us see what is this principle. Lagrange's is a French mathematician and uh, he uh, derived some relationship for formulating the equation of motion in any dynamic system. This relationship will derive from the fundamental principle and then as I have told this relationship is actually a, a method of finding the uh, equation of motions, but it involves the energies of this system. With Lagrange's method the equation of motion can be derived in terms of generalized coordinate. So, that is another condition that has to be satisfied uh, the all the quantities of the degrees of motion degrees of freedom that we know the generalized coordinate has to be expressed as a time coordinate. So, when there is a f in a continuous system, when the displacement is a function of two variable, we have to separate it by the space variable and the time variable then only the Lagrange's equation can be applied. Okay. So, that is the necessary things that we have to do for the continuous system. However, for discrete system when the degrees of freedoms or the motions are only at a discrete point, then it is not necessary to use the separation of variable technique first. We can directly find out the energy of the system and then apply the Lagrange's method. This method is very much useful when the Newton's second law is difficult for application because of complicacy in sign convention. Okay. 
Now, let us see what is the difference between Lagrange's equation and Hamilton equation. In earlier classes, in module 2, I have discussed the Hamilton equation and its formulation and its application in some problems. Now, Hamilton principle as you have seen here, it is a integral equation. So, the integration is carried out for the variation of this t minus v dt and then equated to 0. Then it is equated to 0. However, you can note that t minus v is given a special name that is known as Lagrangian. So, this t minus v is very much useful to be applied in case of Lagrange's method. Now, let us see what will be the difference. Hamilton method is an integral equation in which the total energy is integrated. At least we can say that variation of the total energy is integrated over an interval of time. On the other hand, Lagrange's equation or differential equation in which one considers the energy of the system instantaneously at a time. So, let us see how the equation are derived. Okay. So, if I want to derive the Lagrange's equation, first let us assume that generalized coordinates are specified in the dynamic system and q 1, q 2, q 3, q n, these are the displacement coordinates and its derivative q dot 1, q dot 2, dot dot q dot n are the time derivatives of the displacement coordinate. Now, here displacement is a general term, it may include the rotation also. So, q 1, q 2, q 3 etcetera generalized coordinate does not mean that it is only restricted to translatory motion. The rotational motion are also included in the generalized coordinates q 1, q 2, q 3. So, therefore, q 1 dot q 2 dot etcetera are the velocities, it may be linear velocity or it may be angular velocity which are variable in time. Now, knowing that uh, the system generalized coordinate, we can now express the kinetic energy because kinetic energy is usually in most of the cases it is a function of derivative of the generalized coordinate that is kinetic energy is dependent on the velocity or even the velocity square, but there are some system as I have explained in my uh, earlier lectures say consider an example of the spring pendulum. So, in that case you have seen I have demonstrated with this example that kinetic energy in some special cases may also may be dependent on the displacement coordinate. So, therefore, in general let us write the kinetic energy as this function of displacement uh, q 1, q 2, q 3 and add up to q n and it is also dependent on the velocity q 1, q 2, q n dot. So, these are the velocities uh, that is the time derivative of the displacement coordinate this time derivative is not only the velocity of the translatory uh, motion, but it may also indicate the angular velocity. So, knowing this q 1, q 2, q 3 etcetera and its time derivative q 1 dot q 2 dot etcetera, we can now write the small variation of kinetic energy as delta t is equal to del t by del q 1 dot delta q 1 dot plus del t by del q 2 dot delta q 2 dot plus dot dot del t by del q n dot del q n dot plus del t by del q 1 into delta q 1 plus del t by del q 2 into delta q 2 etcetera. So, these are written uh, following the chain rule of the calculus and you can see that first we have written this terms related to velocities and then terms related to displacement. From this term 
in most of the cases is 0 because the kinetic energy T does not depend on the displacement in general. So, therefore, all this term vanishes in most of the cases, but in few cases and some special cases just as a spring pendulum we have discussed in one example. Such type of problem the kinetic energy may also be dependent on the displacement coordinate. So, we have got the delta T the variation of kinetic energy. Okay. Now, in concise form we can now write the summation j equal to 1 to n uh, del t by del q j dot delta q j dot plus del t by del q j into delta q j. Okay. So, this earlier expression now I have expressed in the summation form. Okay. Then we already know that delta w that is the variation of work done equal to q i into delta q i. Q i is the generalized force in a particular coordinate i and delta q i is the variation of the generalized coordinate uh, q i. Okay. A displacement along the generalized coordinate q i. So, that means, uh, if q i is the force at q 1 is the force at coordinate 1, q 2 is the force at coordinate 2 like that and corresponding the generalized coordinates is q 1, q 2, q 3 etcetera. Then we can write del w is equal to q 1 delta delta q 1 plus capital Q 2 into delta Q 2 like that. So, this is written in the summation form. Okay. Now, let us apply the Hamilton principle. Hamilton principle I have written earlier as uh, delta T minus V d T and it is integration from T 1 to T 2 equal to 0. However, V is minus W. So, we can write this uh, delta T plus W d T integration T 1 to T 2 is nothing but delta T minus V. Okay. So, substituting this here, this is substituted here and also this quantity is substituted here. Okay. Then we can write this integral that is the Hamilton equation okay. and it is equated to 0 as, as you know that Hamilton's principle the variation of total energy when it is integrated between the two time limits T 1 and T 2 and it is equal to 0 provided the varied path and the displaced configuration coincides at T 1 and T 2 and all other displacements are arbitrary not 0. Okay. So, considering the integration of the first term, now you see that first term is a differential quantity because delta q dot and this can be written as after interchanging the operator d by d t delta q j. So, this uh, gives us advantage of integrating by parts. Okay. So, this term delta q dot j is written as d by d t delta q j. Okay. Now, after doing this, we can now integrate this quantity by parts. Okay. So, if I take this as a first term and this is the second term. However, second term is written like that. So, the integration by parts rule says that first term into the integration of the second term. So, second term when we integrate it with respect to t, it becomes delta q and then we put the limit t 1 and t 2 minus integration differentiation derivative of the first term. So, this is the first term. So, is derivative. Then the integration of the second term. Again integration of the second term if I integrate this delta q j d t. Okay. So, we have got this first term of the Hamilton's equation and second term as it is, it is q j delta q. So, after writing this 
in this equation delta t plus w d t integration t 1 to t 2 equal to t 1 integration limit t 1 to t 2 summation j is equal to 1 to n and then your this uh, the integration result that we have done here we are writing minus d by d t delta t by del q j dot plus delta t by del q j plus q j delta q j is taken common. So, from that we can infer that if delta q j is arbitrary and not 0 except at t 1 and t 2 we can write that minus d by d t that is the differential coefficient of delta t by del q dot j plus del t by del q j. You see here the derivative term is not there. In this term there is no differential quantity, but here delta t by del q dot j plus q j equal to 0. So, this is what is Lagrange's equation, very popular equation in structural dynamics. Okay. Now, in general the term q j may consist of non conservative force field or a conservative force field. So, after arranging this the right hand side contains the term q j which I told that it may be purely conservative force field or it may contain the non conservative forces due to damping in the structures, damping force or any other impressed or imposed loading. Okay. So, let us see the generalization of this equation. Now, recalling that generalized force consists of that of conservative and non conservative forces, we can write q j equal to q a i plus q d i plus q e i. You can see q a i is the applied force that means a force applied on the system which is variable in time or may be a constant also. Then q d i is the damping force that is a real structural system must have the damping properties. Without damping even there is a small damping, but all the systems have some amount of damping. Other dampings are also there. So, uh, then q e i is the in internal elastic forces that is the spring forces or <coughs> due to spring force or gravity force this consists of the conservative force field. Okay. So, therefore, q e i we can write as the del v by del q i. So, this is the if for conservative force field we can write if v is the potential then we can write del v by del q i. So, therefore, for conservative force system the Lagrange's equation can be modified as say uh, this q j was there in earlier in the right hand side and the q j now consists of only the elastic part. So, therefore, we can write it minus del v by del q i and therefore, it is brought here that means with plus sign. So, this is the Lagrange's equation for conservative force system. In many of the problems you will get that uh, non conservative forces do not act or are negligible. So, in that case the equation of motion can be formulated by conservative force field. Okay. So, what we see in this equation T is the kinetic energy. So, that is the most important quantity to be known to apply the Lagrange's equation kinetic energy, kinetic energy of the system. Okay. Then you can see that kinetic energy of the system is differentiated with the derivative of this q i dot. So, that is possible because kinetic energy contains the terms which are dependent on the derivative of the generalized coordinate. 
then again the time derivative of this function is taken. Then second term that is del t by del q y in many cases it vanishes because kinetic energy does not depend on the generalized coordinates. And the third term the potential total potential of course, it depends on the generalized coordinate or position of the uh, body. So, therefore, it can be uh, differentiated with respect to ki. Okay. So, this is the Lagrange's equation for uh, conservative force field. Okay. Now, let us see for non-conservative system, the Lagrange's equation can be written as d by d t del t by del q y dot that is first we will do this operation that kinetic energy is differentiated with q dot i. Then this result is again differentiated with respect to time minus del t by del q i there is no differential uh, derivative of this uh, generalized coordinate plus del v by del q i equal to q n c by i n c i. So, this is the non conservative force field. So, that contains the damping force or applied force in dynamic system. Now, when we consider a damping force as a non conservative force field, a special function has been defined by Rayleigh and it is known as Rayleigh's dissipation function. So, what is Rayleigh's dissipation function? Rayleigh's dissipation function is written in this form R is a symbol R half summation of r equal to 1 to n, summation of s equal to 1 to n, c r s q dot r q dot s. That means, these are the functions of velocity square that is the quadratic function of the velocity. So, q d i that is the non conservative force one of the non conservative forces that is the damping force is now written that is defined as shown by Rayleigh that it can be written as del r, r is the Rayleigh's dissipation function which is differentiate uh, at divided by del q i dot. That means, Rayleigh's dissipation function is differentiated with the derivative of the generalized coordinate, derivative of the generalized coordinate. So, we get this Rayleigh's uh, damping force in that case and that means, in case of damped system, this is separately written in the left hand side as del r by del q dot j, which is advantageous, because you know that in a damped system, in most of the system contains uh, damping, then in that case, we separately find the Rayleigh's dissipation function and we can write the left hand side of the Lagrange's equation very easily. And then, right hand side will be only the forces excluding damping that are the non conservative forces excluding damping and mainly it indicates that these will be the applied forces on the body undergoing the uh, oscillation or vibration. Okay. Now, let us illustrate this by certain examples. First, let us take an example of single degree freedom undamped system. Okay. In single degree freedom undamped system, you can see that kinetic energy is half m x dot square. So, generalized coordinate q 1 is here x, okay. only uh, one generalized coordinate exists here, but you may note that in the earlier derivation when I differentiated this j may vary from 1 to n that means, depending on the number of generalized coordinate. Okay. So, it may vary from that 1 to n. So, therefore, in single degree equation single degree freedom system there will be only one equation because the only one generalized coordinate is there q 1 equal to x, x is here it is a generalized coordinate and q 1 dot is equal to x dot and uh, this is a free vibration problem. So, the q t there is no external force equal to 0, there is no external force. So, it is equal to 0. Okay. 
So, therefore, we can write the Lagrange's equation. This is the Lagrange's equation we have to apply del t by del q dot i. If I differentiated this, it will be say del t by del x dot equal to you see that it can be easily differentiated half will be there and then 2 x dot m and 2 2 will be cancel is it not. So, we are getting this quantity okay? this quantity again this is differentiated with respect to time t. So, therefore, we get m is a constant mass is a constant quantity. So, we get m x double dot. Okay. Now, come to the potential, the uh, potential expression v is equal to half k x square. Okay. This potential will be same as uh, in case of dam system also. So, this potential is half k x square and when we differentiate that del v by del x, it will be simply it will be k x. Okay. Because this 2 will be cancelled with half and it will left with only k x. And you see that kinetic energy here does not contain x, that is only the generalized coordinate, it is the function of derivative of the generalized coordinate. So, therefore, the second term this is 0. So, therefore, this we have written as 0. Now, we get after doing this operation m x double dot plus k x is the differential equation of motion, differential equation of motion, okay. differential equation of motion online. For a single degree freedom system undamped and under free vibration condition. Okay. Now, consider a force vibration problem of a single degree freedom dam system. Now, this is a dam system okay, because of damper that is a dashboard included here okay, in the model and the generalized coordinates is again uh, defined as the coordinate x. So, q 1 is x, q 1 dot is x dot, but earlier cases capital Q 1 that is the generalized force was treated as 0, but here it is the applied force Q A 1 it is nothing but f t. So, it is in the direction of the generalized coordinate. So, therefore, we have taken this is a positive sign. Now, you can see the damping force here it is also a non conservative force. So, therefore, damping force for linear uh, viscous damping cases is actually is proportional to the velocity, but since the damping force opposes the motion. So, therefore, it is written with a minus sign. So, damping force here is minus c into x dot for a viscously damped system. So, all the non conservative forces are now uh, written in the left hand side and therefore, it is written as m x double dot plus k x, k x how k x is coming, k x is coming from that and this is because the t does not contain t is actually half m x dot square half m x dot square and since uh, it does not contain this x. So, therefore, del t by del x equal to 0. Okay. Del t by del x equal to 0. So, hence we can write this m x double dot plus k x because this is again equal to 0 and q and c non conservative forces are written as minus c x dot plus f t. Okay. So, c x dot we got here as a damping force and f t is the applied force, but it is in the direction of motion therefore, it is taken positive. Hence, equation of motion is written is m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f t. Now, you see here I have not used any Rayleigh's dissipation function, but if I use the Rayleigh's dissipation function the same result will be obtained. So, if I write the Rayleigh's dissipation function 
r is equal to half c x dot square because only one coordinate is there. So, I have written half c x dot square. Now, when I take the derivative of Rayleigh's dissipation function with respect to this velocities that is the derivative of the generalized coordinate again we get c x dot. So, now the Lagrange's equation if I write in other way that means, if I take this release dissipation function here then here we can write another term del r by del x dot and here q n c, but here q n c will be only consisting of f t because c x dot that I have written here has been taken care of in this release dissipation function. Okay. Let us discuss another problem. So, this problem is different from the other two problems because it is a two degree of freedom system. As you know that uh, you can observe from here this mass is here mounted on a roller and it is displaced in this direction and with a spin constant k. A pendulum is attached okay, here by a rigid rod of length L and the displacement angle is theta. Okay. So, here you can see that uh, when this uh, displacement is x, then the velocity in this direction that is transferred here, uh, motion transfer in this uh, pendulum, it is x dot as well as due to this rotation in a circular path this the linear velocity l theta dot. Okay. So, now because of this two velocities are there you can see two vectors are there. So, we can use now resultant. So, using the parallelogram law of vectors we can now write the resultant as if the, this is the resultant velocity we can easily write v is equal to x dot square plus l square theta square plus twice x l theta dot cos theta. So, this angle is theta dot. Okay. So, we have taken this uh, the resultant of this two velocities and then here you can see that two generalized coordinates are there one is q 1 is equal to x q 2 is equal to theta. So, the motion is uh, described by two generalized coordinate x and theta and then we know that we, we can observe from here in this figure that q 1 and q 2 are 0. So, therefore, we can write the total kinetic energy of the system consisting of the kinetic energy of the mass capital M that is half m x dot square then kinetic energy of the mass of the pendulum that is half m v square v is the resultant velocity. So, now we can write the total kinetic energy as half m x dot square plus half m x dot square plus l square theta dot square plus twice x dot l theta dot cos theta. So, we have written the total kinetic energy of the system, total potential energy of the system. The from the static equilibrium position as it was here located the mass is displaced here pendulum mass after the displacement of this mass m. So, here is we can easily note that small m is displaced by an amount l minus l cos theta. So, therefore, the potential energy of the system is now written due to change of position that is m g l into 1 minus cos theta and due to the spring extension or compression it is half k x square. So, potential energy consists of two terms one is due to position that is m g l 1 minus cos theta of the small mass m change of position and this another is half k x square due to spring action. Okay. So, now if I apply the Lagrange's equation we know the Lagrange's equation is d by d t del t del q dot 1 
minus del t del q 1 plus del v by del q 1 equal to 0. Now, here you can see the q 1 and q 2 are the two generalized coordinate q 1 equal to x that is the displacement of the mass uh, capital uh, capital m and q 2 is the rotation of the uh, this pendulum mass. Okay. So, that two uh, generalized coordinates are identified. So, we have to write two Lagrange's equation. First Lagrange's equation is written with respect to q 1. So, d by d t del t by del q dot 1 minus del t by del q 1 plus del v by del q 1 equal to 0. As you know from this expression or you can observe it very easily that the kinetic energy expression does not contain the displacement term okay the q1 or q2 or x and theta therefore the differentiation of kinetic energy with respect to generalized coordinate 1 is definitely zero so now the displacement that is existing are only this q1 and q2 and if i take the velocity that is q1 dot and q 2 dot that means x dot and theta dot. So, after differentiating this expression del t by del x 1 first we are finding the equation of motion with respect to generalized coordinate 1. So, del t by del x dot equal to m x dot plus m x dot script small m into x dot plus l theta dot cos theta. How this term is coming you can compare from here that is if the kinetic energy expression is this then if I differentiate with x dot this quantity will be differentiated as m x double dot ok after differentiating again with respect to d t with respect to t, but this does not contain any uh, uh, variable with x or x dot. So, therefore, the differentiation of this will not appear here but here you can see it is a product of x dot and theta dot. So, therefore, it is differentiated in two steps and their differential quantities are written here. Okay. So, d by d t into del t by del x dot now become capital M x double dot plus small m x double dot plus m l theta double dot cos theta minus m l theta dot square into sin theta. Then first equation is now becoming after substituting this and v is this. So, if I differentiate this with respect to x only this quantity will come. So, k x is coming. So, the first equation is m plus m x double dot plus m l theta double dot cos theta minus m l theta dot square sin theta plus k x. This is the equation of motion of the mass capital M. So, we have obtained one equation first equation. Second equation we have to obtain again by writing this this Lagrange's equation in this form d by d t minus del t by del q 2 plus del v by del q 2 equal to 0. Okay. So, let us do this operation. You can see here if I differentiate with respect to q 2 dot this will not come into questions because it is differentiation with respect to q 2 dot that is it is theta dot and uh, we can see this is again will be uh, 0 because there is no displacement term in the kinetic energy and of course, we can differentiate this and in that case the d v by d q 2 only will consist of this, this will come and uh, this will be written as, this will be written as m g l ok. Derivative of cos theta is minus sin theta. So, it is sin theta. So, this is applied in the second equations 
and second equation as I have discussed, I have written. So, this is the second equation of motion and uh, we have written d b by d theta is this okay. and uh, then uh, other quantities are written d theta by d t by d theta. We have to differentiate this quantity with respect to theta dot. Okay. So, therefore, we are getting m l square theta dot plus m x dot l cos theta and again differentiating this with respect to time we get m l square theta double dot m x double dot l cos theta minus m x dot l theta dot sin theta. Because here this uh, the cos theta is there, so therefore, we differentiated it. Okay. Uh, here we have differentiated two uh, functions are there, because when the time derivative was considered first the time derivative was taken for x dot and cos theta remains as it is. In the second operation the first term was written as it is and cos theta is differentiated as sin theta with a minus sign and d b by d theta again you can see if I differentiate this m g l cos theta derivative is sin theta. So, it will be m g l minus sin theta. So, minus minus plus sin theta. Okay. So, we can write the differential equation. Second differential equation is m l cos theta x double dot plus m l square theta double dot minus m x dot l theta dot sin theta plus m g l sin theta. So, this is equation number 2. Okay. Now, scope exists to linearize this equation because this is completely a nonlinear equation, but small displacement field we can assume that x and theta are negligible, means it is a small quantity, not negligible, it is a small quantity. Therefore, sin theta is equal to theta approximately and cos theta is approximately equal to 1. So, with this assumption, the earlier equation this now, cos theta is 1 and sin theta is theta. So, therefore, and again here you can see cos theta is 1 and sin theta is theta. So, with this assumption, the two equations are now written as m plus m cap small m plus uh, small m plus capital M into x double dot plus m l theta dot double dot plus k x. So, this is the inertia term again this is another inertia term. So, this is the equation of motion 1 and from second equation after assuming the small displacement x and theta we can write m l l m l cos theta x double dot plus m l square theta double dot minus m x dot l theta dot sin theta m g l sin theta equal to 0 s m l x double dot because cos theta is now 1 okay. and m l square theta double dot is there and here again sin theta will be written as theta. So, this can be uh, written as uh, m g l theta it is written and uh, this is again written this however, this is x dot and theta dot both are small quantities. So, product of two small quantities is neglected. So, therefore, equation of motion can be simplified as m l x double dot m l square theta double dot plus m g l theta. So, this is equation 2 you can see that these two equations are coupled equation of motion that means both the equation contains the variable x and theta. Okay. Now, let us consider another problem that is a 3 degree of freedom system. 3 degree of freedom multi degree of freedom system are very common in our application say multi story building or other structures and here we can see that two masses actually it is not 3 degrees of freedom because the two ends of the extreme springs are fixed. So, only two masses are there. So, it is actually a two degrees of freedom system. Okay. So, generalized coordinates are q 1 equal to x 1 and q 2 equal to x 2 and there is no force acting on this mass 
on the in the direction of generalized coordinates. So, q 1 equal to q 2 uh, taken as 0. Now, here you can see the spring k 1 and dashboard c 1 is fixed on the wall. One end is fixed on the wall and other end is attached to the mass m 1. Whereas, the second spring the having the spring uh, constant k 2 and dashboard having the damping constant as c 2. The one end of this spring and dashboard is connected to the mass m 1 and other end is connected to the mass m 2. Similarly, if I see the spring k 3 and dashboard c 3, the one end is connected to the mass m 2 and other end is fixed to the wall. So, with that condition that we see depicted in the figure, now we can write down the equation of kinetic energy and potential energy because it will depend on the relative displacement and velocity. So, for the mass m 1, the kinetic energy of half m 1 x 1 dot square and for mass m 2 kinetic energy is half m 2 x 2 dot square. Potential energy is half k 1 x 1 dot square plus half k 2 into relative displacement between the two ends of the spring k 2. Here relative displacement is 0 because the one end of the spring is fixed at the wall. So, the relative displacement is only x 1 okay? because the displacement at the wall is 0 that is 0 displacement. Here also it is 0 displacement. So, therefore, we can write this potential energy is half k 1 x 1 square plus half k 2 x 1 minus x 2 whole square plus half k 3 x 2 square. In Rayleigh's dissipation function now we can introduce. Rayleigh's dissipation function now can be written as half c 1 x 1 dot square plus half c 2 x 1 dot minus x 2 dot whole square plus half c 3 x 2 dot square. Okay. With these three quantities, now the terms of the Lagrange's equation as written. So, del t by del x 1 dot equal to m 1 x 1 dot plus m 2 x 2 dot and you can see that del t by del x 1 because kinetic energy does not contain this uh, displacement coordinates. So, del t by del x, x 1 is 0. So, del v by del x 1 we get k 1 x 1 plus k 2 x 1 minus x 2. From Rayleigh's dissipation function we can write this quantity del r by del x 1 dot equal to c 1 x 1 dot plus c 2 x 1 dot minus x 2 dot. So, now we can write the first equation of the uh, motion. So, first equation of the motion with respect to this mass m 1 is written as d by d t into del t by del x 1 dot plus del v by del x 1 plus del r by del x 1 dot minus del t by del x 1 equal to 0, because there is no other conservative force except the damping externally applied forces are 0 in that case, because we have taken a free vibration cases. So, therefore, the first equation of motion becomes m 1 x 1 double dot plus k 1 plus k 2 x 1 minus k 2 x 2 plus c 1 plus c 2 x 1 dot minus c 2 x 2 dot. So, this is equation 1 for the problem. Okay. Equation 2 again we have to obtain so, equation 2 we have to do the operation with the generalized coordinate x 2. So, first we carry out this differentiation del t by del x 2 dot. So, it becomes m 2 x 2 double dot. Then del v by del x 2 we get k 2 x 1 minus x 2 into minus 1 plus k 3 x 2. Then from release dissipation function we again obtain this quantity del r by del x 2. So, it becomes del x 2 dot okay, del x 2 dot. So, it becomes c 2 into x 1 dot minus x 2 dot into minus 1 plus c 3 x 2. 
therefore, equation of motion become that is the second equation d by d t del t by del x 2 dot plus del v by del x 2 plus del r by del x 2 dot minus del t by del x 2. So, del t by del x 2 is 0 ok del x 2 is 0 and other quantity now we can write m 2 x 2 double dot minus k 2 x 1 plus k 2 plus k 3 bracket then x 2 minus c 2 x 1 dot plus c 2 plus c 3 x 2 dot equal to 0. So, now you can see that we obtain the two equation of motion and we can express this in the matrix form also if required. So, matrix form of the equation if I write from the first equation we get the mass matrix first two equation mass matrix as m 2 m 1 and these are the 0 quantity of diagonal elements are 0 and this is the acceleration terms plus if I write the matrix the damping matrix you can see here C 1 plus C 2 is associated with x 1 dot minus C 2. Then, uh, from the second equation we have to pick up the other quantities from second equation if I see that coefficient of the term x 1 dot is minus c 2. So, therefore, we can write here as minus c 2 and uh, we can write now the other terms as c 2 plus c 3. Okay. So, c 2 plus c 3 and this is the vector of velocities. Then we have the stiffness term, stiffness term can be similarly written k 1 plus k 2 minus k 2 minus k 2 k 2 plus k 3 and the associated vector that is x 1 and x 2 equal to 0. So, we have got the equation of motion in matrix form and you can observe that the all the system matrices that is mass, stiffness and damping matrices are positive definite and also symmetric matrix. So, that is the characteristics of the stable system. So, m 1, m 2 are the diagonal elements of the mass matrix, other off diagonal elements are 0 and the damping matrix you see that C 1 C 2 etcetera C 1 C 2 are the damping coefficient which is for a stable system it is a positive quantity. So, therefore, we can see the diagonal elements are positive and we can see that it is also symmetrical. Similar is the case with the stiffness matrix that is k 1 plus k 2 is again positive quantity here the diagonal elements are positive and again we can see that symmetrical characteristics is the retained. So, therefore, the application of Lagrange's equation is very convenient for multi degree freedom system as well as the single degree freedom system. Only thing is that you have to know the generalized coordinate as a function of time. Okay. So, let us see uh, what we have discussed today summarize this our lecture. So, in this lecture Lagrange's equation are derived derivation is done with the help of Hamilton equation once the energies of the system are written in terms of generalized coordinates. That means, we derive the Lagrange's equation, but we take the help of earlier derived equation that is the Hamilton principle. So, with the help of Hamilton principle, we have derived the equation after knowing the energy expression and the potential function as well as release dissipation function in case of damp system in terms of generalized coordinates. So, both conservative and non-conservative systems for application of Lagrange's equations are explained to you and examples of single degree freedom system, conservative and non-conservative multi degree freedom system, discrete systems are illustrated or explained to you with an example step by step. Thanking you very much. Mm -hmm.